if we are being technical about things, we are doing this service a little bit early. The Apodipno, the Compline service, is supposed to be done after the evening meal, which in turn is supposed to come after the small vespers, which ought to come a little bit before the hour of sunset, and Compline is supposed to be the after-dinner prayers, which we say before we go to sleep. But as you can see, the sun is still up, although as it descends in the sky, the light here in the church is waxing and waning. But this is a prayer for darkness. This is a prayer not for the lighting of the lamp, that is the Vesper service. This is a prayer that Christians pray when the light is gone and darkness has overwhelmed the world. It is therefore a good service for us in these times, when it seems that trouble has overwhelmed the news cycle, which tends towards trouble anyway, and trouble has overwhelmed our minds and our hearts. It is good for us to understand and to remember that this ebb and flow of light and of darkness, of hope and of fear, of joy and of worry. This is not a new thing. It seems new to us in this age in which we can deceive ourselves that we have mastered all the limitations that constrained our forefathers. But now we find that we are no more masters of our fate than they were, whether 100 or 500 or 2,000 or 5,000 years ago. We still exist constrained within these same cycles of light and dark, hope and fear, joy and sadness. What we ought to learn from this service then is how Christians face these realities. It is not a <clears throat> clever or subtle or ingenious approach. It is very simple. When the light dawns, when the sun comes up, Christian people pray to the Lord and thank Him for the coming of the light for the coming of joy, and ask for his grace and his strength for the days to come. When the light fails, when fear comes upon us, Christian people look to the Lord and ask for strength to endure and deliverance from what may be escape. When joy comes, we look to God and we thank him for the blessings he has showered upon us. When sorrow comes, we look to the Lord and we ask him for strength to endure and for grace to hope in the joy that comes again. In all times of life, we turn to the Lord and thank him for his blessings and ask for his grace his mercy and his strength to endure. It is for this reason that the daily office of the church exists. For this reason that active Christians pray in the morning and in the evening and at all times. For from the Lord we will find strength we will receive mercy. We will be granted hope that the sun will come up again, that the light will dawn once more, and that we are not left alone in the hours or the days or the months of darkness and worry, but that the Lord walks with us and holds us up 
and sustain them by his love and his grace. We must pray then that in these days we may learn better to trust, to hope, to turn to the Lord, not only in times of trouble, but in times of joy and peace, that we may learn to imitate, to walk, to imitate those who have gone before us in the Christian life, to walk in the paths that they have carved out for us, that we may learn from the services we have received from God how it is that Christian people face both the good and the evil things that come to us in life. To all of you who are watching, to all of you who are in your homes, caring for one another, may the Lord grant to you his strength, his mercy, his love, and his hope, and that we may all together walk and advance in faith, in trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who does not leave us, who does not forsake us, and who brings us always safely into harbor and leads us into everlasting love. God be with you all.